Well, yesterday, just after business hours on the East Coast, maybe you had finally stepped away from the computer, but uh, the Twitter accounts of luminaries such as Warren Buffett, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Kanye West, Barack Obama, many others had their accounts compromised uh, in a Bitcoin scam of sorts. And, uh, and we're still trying to figure out exactly what happened. And for more on everything we do and don't know right now, we're joined by Teresa Payton, uh, the CEO of Fort Alice Solutions and a former White House chief intelligence officer. Teresa, thanks for joining the program. So I guess let's just start with what we've learned in the last 24 hours of what you know about um, what exactly happened last night to these accounts on Twitter. Yeah, so it sounds like there was some inside help. So insider threat, big surprise, is alive and well um, in corporate America, including social media like Twitter. And it sounds like there was some inside help, either wittingly or unwittingly, which allowed the attackers to bypass the authorization system or the system module. Uh, and that's why they were able to get around things like two-factor authentication for these VIPs. The other thing that I wanna make sure we remember what we don't know. So the only accounts we know that were accessed are the ones that the attackers decided to flip when they were done with them and turn it into this Bitcoin fraud scam. We don't know how many other accounts the attackers actually had in their possession because they didn't flip those accounts. We also don't know how long they had possession of the accounts and we don't know if they access their direct messages, taking things perhaps like private photos, private messages, private videos, and whether or not they tried to use the identities of these VIPs to pivot and reach out to other accounts. I mean, how would you respond if you thought President Obama was reaching out to you from a verified blue check mark account on Twitter asking you to do a story with you? You might actually think it's him. So we really have a lot that we don't know. And Trace, I mean, how serious, though, is this for Twitter? Because when you take a look at the stock's reaction today, I mean, its shares are only off just around 1%. And obviously, there are some concerns here just in terms of maybe these higher profile names won't trust Twitter uh, as much right away. But just in the long term, do you think that this is something that Twitter will easily be able to put behind them? I believe they will put them put it behind them because unfortunately, when these types of attacks happen, uh, we just move on to the next thing once it gets cleaned up and people make their apologies. And we've hit the snooze button too much. We are in a presidential election cycle right now. Um, I've written a whole book on manipulation campaigns and how they're being used to actually provide disinformation on all social issues, not just on elections. And this should have been a huge wake up call for all of social media, what happened. Uh, everybody has the opportunity for something like this to happen on their platforms. They better be testing for it. They better have a playbook for it. And they need to, just like the financial services industry, which is where I came from before I went to the White House, know how to have a governance process in place so no one person can just access the keys to the kingdom and do things like this. So there's really a lot of explaining to do here. In addition um, to that, if you think about the individuals who were defrauded of their hard earned money, um, with the banks, if you have your credit card used unauthorized, the bank has to make you whole. Twitter needs to make every single one of these individuals whole. And that would be a great way to recoup their reputation. But think about this. Twitter and other social media platforms today are used, like if there's an active shooter situation, people use it to help people get out of harm's way. If there's a tsunami or there's a hurricane coming, people use it to say, I'm doing okay, or to look for weather alerts, to look for news from this organization. And what if people were actually sent into harm's way? What if it wasn't just defrauding people of their money? What if it was the week before elections and something preposterous and untrue were posted on President Obama's account, on Warren Buffett's account, on Bill Gates' account, and we wouldn't have time to tell people, don't, you need to unsee that and don't counter that, you know, when you go into the voting booth. So this is a problem. And a tsunami bell warning went off for me. It has gone off for me. Every single one of these social media platform uh, hacks that happen. And we can't just move on to the next thing. Um, there's a lot of explaining that needs to be done here, and it's not just Twitter. Yeah, on that point, Teresa, of course, uh, 
Twitter's not alone in the kind of scrutiny that folks are bringing to awareness when it comes to Facebook, but also TikTok, right? When you look at the data privacy concerns there, do you feel as though some of those concerns are overblown? Do you anticipate that TikTok will uh, continue to get the limelight here? How do you see all of these different social networks being treated, at least from a regulatory standpoint? What people, I think, don't realize and why this is going to be very difficult to change the conversation with TikTok and social media is we're in, because of the pandemic, the town square, the places that we used to meet and congregate and see people that we know and love and, and have conversation has been replaced. It's mostly social media right now, including TikTok. So it's going to be very hard, especially for Gen Y and Gen Z. You want to pry their fingers away from, I'm raising three Gen Zs, and I have to have the conversation on a regular basis around, no, don't go to a website and look at TikTok videos. So they're, they're, we're really challenged right now in this pandemic. We're really searching for a way to stay connected more than ever. And so social media companies do have a responsibility to be incredibly transparent about their governance process, um, looking for opportunities to mark things and label things as misinformation campaigns, mm -hmm. and really keeping up with sort of the fake personas uh, and being transparent around what they do and what they do not collect about you, how they store it, and by the way, who they sell it to. Yeah, uh, certainly a conversation uh, that is uh, just beginning, and I think uh, perhaps many people are not aware of how involved a, a lot of their social media activity is is as a part of all this uh, this this lattice work, I guess we could call it. All right, Teresa Payton, uh, thank you so much for joining the program. Uh, hopefully, we could talk again because unfortunately, there will be more hacks in the future. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.